Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. This video will cover two different problems where x is in the exponent of an equation. Problem one, solve for real values of x such that nine to the power of x plus 12 to the power of x is equal to 16 to the power of x. Problem two, Solve for real values of x such that 8 to the power of x minus 2 to the power of x all over 6 to the power of x minus 3 to the power of x is equal to 2. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's get started with problem one. The first thing we'll do to this equation is we will divide each side of the equation by nine to the power of x. This will mean that each term is divided by nine to the power of x. Now nine to the power of x divided by nine to the power of x will be equal to one. Then 12 to the power of x divided by nine to the power of x can be rewritten as 12 over nine to the power of x. 16 to the power of x divided by nine to the power of x can also be rewritten as 16 over nine to the power of x. Now 12 over nine is equal to four over three. We can substitute that in. And 16 over nine is equal to the square of four over three. So we will substitute that in. Now, we have 4 over 3 squared, and this is raised to the power x, where x is a real number. So for raising a power to a power, we can multiply the exponents. So this is equal to 2 multiplied by x. We now make a substitution. Let u be equal to 4 over 3 raised to the power of x. Then the square of u will be equal to that square which is equal to four over three raised to the power of two x. So we can substitute these variables in. We now have a simple equation, one plus u is equal to u squared. We can rewrite this as zero is equal to u squared minus u minus one. We now will apply the quadratic formula. U is equal to one plus or minus the square root of one squared minus four multiplied by one multiplied by negative one all over two multiplied by one. This gives two possibilities, one plus or minus root five all over two. But now u was equal to four over three raised to the power of x. And for x a real number, this will be greater than zero. So we can eliminate the negative value so we get rid of one minus root five all over two because that would be less than zero. So we just have one possibility, which is u is equal to one plus root five all over two. And this is the golden ratio. But again, we're not done yet. We need to solve for x. So in this second equation, we'll take the natural log of both sides of the equation. Since x is a real number, we bring this down to the front and we have x multiplied by the natural log of four over three is equal to the natural log of u. We divide both sides of the equation by the natural log of four over three, and then we substitute for the value of u. So we get that x is equal to the natural log of the golden ratio, which equals one plus root five all over two. And this is all divided by the natural log of four over three. And this is approximately equal to 1.673. And that's the answer to the first problem. Now, problem two. This is a very different equation, and unfortunately, we can't apply any of the tricks we just used in problem one. We are going to have to solve this in a very different way. So let's get started. First, suppose that x is equal to zero. In that case, we would have eight to the zero minus two to the zero, all over six to the zero minus three to the zero. This equals one minus one over one minus one, which would be zero over zero, which is undefined. 
Therefore, x cannot be equal to 0. From here, let's manipulate this equation. 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 3, and 6 is equal to 2 times 3. We can then use exponent rules to get 2 to the 3x minus 2 to the x, all over 2 to the x multiplied by 3 to the x minus 3 to the x. We can then factor in the numerator and the denominator. We take a factor of 2 to the x in the numerator and a factor of 3 to the x in the denominator. From here, 2 to the 2x minus 1 is a difference of squares. We factor it as 2 to the x minus 1 multiplied by 2 to the x plus 1. Now since x is not equal to 0, 2 to the x minus 1 is not equal to 0, so we can cancel out this term. We can then distribute through in the numerator. Then 2 to the power of 2x can be rewritten as 2 squared to the power of x, which is equal to 4 to the power of x. From here, we will divide through by 3 to the power of x. So we have 4 to the x divided by 3 to the x plus 2 to the x divided by 3 to the x is all equal to 2. We can then rewrite this as 4 over 3 raised to the power of x plus 2 over 3 raised to the power of x is equal to 2. So now let's define a function f of x to be 4 over 3 raised to the power of x plus 2 over 3 raised to the power of x minus 2. We can take the first derivative of this function, and then we can take the second derivative of this function. Notice that 4 over 3 to the power of x is greater than 0. The square of a natural log will be greater than 0. Then we have 2 over 3 raised to the power of x. That will be greater than 0. And then we multiply this by a squared term, so that will also be greater than 0. So f double prime of x is strictly greater than 0. What does that mean? That means f of x is a strictly convex function, which means it has at most two distinct roots. To illustrate this, the function will look something like this. It can have at most two distinct roots. So we know that f of 1 is a root by direct substitution, because 4 over 3 plus 2 over 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, if x could be equal to 0, f of 0 would be equal to 1 plus 1 minus 2, which equals 0. So this function f of x defined everywhere would have two roots at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 0. But we know in the original equation, x cannot be equal to 0. Therefore, that cannot be a solution of the original equation. And x equals 1 is the only real root. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.